The bolt gouge is probably one of my favorite tools. It's a great freehand shaping tool. I'm going to show you some good tips now on how to use this tool. Even though the ball gouge and the mini ball gouge look very much the same, there really are some uh, differences. The angle of the cutter is slightly different and this one is being set up such that it doesn't cut on the very bottom, whereas this one does. Now that's really important. When you've got a small cutter like this, it doesn't require this extra surface that doesn't cut. So with all of the turbo uh, tools we always have one surface that doesn't cut. So the mini ball gouge doesn't have that, it'll plunge straight in. The larger ball gouge doesn't cut on the top. When this spins the cutter forms a sphere but there's no cutting edge at this point here. And that allows it to be steadied on the wood and it stops it from jumping around. So it's very, very steady on that edge, but it will not plunge straight down. To cut into the wood, you need to lean it over slightly. So you should always lean it to the right, like this. You do not want to lean it this direction because the blade is cutting like that and it will pull towards you. If you lean it in this direction, it always pulls away from you and it's very safe and easy to use. With this tool, I always use it on an angle, slight angle this way, and move it around the different cuts that I want. You can literally do any shape with this. You can write your name with it. Now this uh, blade has some interesting qualities. Notice that the cutter itself is a cylinder which you can loosen off and rotate to a new edge. And the cutting edge is the front face here and this face here. So it cuts on that surface but it rides on this surface. So if you imagine it's going in a, in a circular motion, it cuts with that but immediately after it, it's got a negative surface and that pushes it out. So the result of that is that it stops it from grabbing. Now, if this was inside a cut, ordinarily it would grab in this position and would be hard to control. But you can see the back of the blade very quickly throws it away. So you may get a little bumping action. So it may be bumpy, but it's very, very easy to control. So I'll demonstrate now by doing a, a quite a deep hole and uh, we'll just check around the perimeter of that hole where the danger spots are and what the control is like in each of those areas. So I'll start by just putting it on an angle like this. Like as I say, I always like to have the blade rotating away from me. That gives me really good control and then I'll plunge it in and hollow it out. Ready? Now the first thing I notice for good control is that when I'm cutting here, I lean it like this, and then I lean it as I go around. So I'm not just holding it on the set angle. I did try that, but it doesn't, it, it's not as controllable as, as if I do that as I go down. So I'll just keep going further. So you saw as I was going, I lean it over as I'm going, and I lean it over as in, in each direction as I go. I found that was the most controllable. I'll try it vertically, I'll just hold it vertical and go around there and we'll just see what it does in each corner. Now you saw that here it was smooth, but here where it's trying to lift the grain, it was bouncing. But if I lean it over, what does it do? So this corner here and that corner here, because of the grain, that's where it's wanting to lift the grain, that's where it's wanting to lift the grain. If I just go vertical into it, I'll get that sort of vibration. If I lean it over like this, I get beautiful control. So this is the most dangerous if it's in the vertical position. I'll just demonstrate that again. And 
And now I'll lean it over and drag it into that corner. When you're in deep, you don't want to keep it vertical all the time. You lean it into the corner that you want to go into and you'll get really good control. Another feature of the ball gouge is that it actually cuts all the way around up until right where that shiny line is that you see there. So it actually cuts on the top, on the back of the blade. So if I wanted a nice rounded surface here, I can actually cut backwards over here. Always remember where the grain is running because if I wanted a nice clean edge here, I want to make sure the blade is pulling down. You can see here it's chipped a little bit. If I come from this direction, I can clean that up. See, that's all chipped here. Now I'll just clean that up. With any power tool like this, you want to be pulling the grain down if you want a nice clean cut. Ball gouge is a truly wonderful tool. It'll remove wood in any direction, wherever you move the tool. The only thing, of course, is you, that you should watch the grain direction and the direction that you approach it, just like any carving tool.